talking about this in the beginning. What's cool about podcasts right. is there's this authenticity right. that comes out where it's like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Maybe it's fucking wrong. Maybe it's right. But, uh, you know, I know that the more that I just allow myself to say whatever's really going on, how I really feel, mostly, then generally the response is always like, that's you think that's awful? Like, I remember I was so kind of guilty. I felt guilty because I got jerked off by a masseuse. Oh, I remember you talking about and that. And I remember, like, yapping about that because yeah. I felt some guilt. And yeah. then, like, the response what, from the from most everyone was, "That's you think that's bad? Right. Like, that's where you're at right now? Right. And there's a forgiveness that comes through that confession, yeah. you know? It, it, but generally, so it's that kind of thing where it's like, God damn it. Just fucking when you're around a, a woman that you are interested in, just be honest within the you know within whatever pl- and, and polite. But don't deceive somebody. Don't trick them. And if you're a woman, don't tr- just stop tricking each other. It's not that big a deal, is it? Let's just try. So what? You're, you can't use fucking the advertising industry as a model for your ethics, right? Well, a lot of people do. That's the problem. And it gets back to what you said before is the shaping of normalcy, right? The shaping of what is normal behavior that comes through the TV set that that manipulation and lying and trickery and all that kind of stuff to get what you want is held up in this society as admirable behavior. You win. You're a winner. You get the girl, you get the car, you get the job, you get the promotion, right. you get the money, right? Yeah. How do you, you don't get a lot of money in the society by being honest and sincere and authentic. Unless you do a podcast. Unless you're a very fortunate person, right? And it, I think it's the same thing with, um, you know, to play the devil's advocate. I think that a lot of these guys would say, look, there's no way I'm going to get laid if I don't resort to these tricks. I'm not a famous comedian. I'm not a good, super good looking guy. I don't have a great job. What do I have? Fucking nothing. So the only chance I have of finding love in this world is to trick some woman to spending enough time with me to get to know me and right, then maybe she'll fall in love with me. The person who says all that, what you would say is, here's what you work on first, my sweet friend. Right, exactly. You work on your fucking self-image. Right, right. What, everything you just said about what you think you are is wrong. You're a human being on planet Earth and you deserve love like anybody else. And you don't have to – and also, P.S. Well, you deserve it, but it's hard to get it when you're uh, you know overweight Shit, guy working at Let Burger King. Let me tell King you something. Nebraska. I was a fucking overweight. I don't know how overweight I was, but I washed dishes at a fucking Chili's in Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> I washed dishes at a fucking Chili's. The other, uh-huh. you know who? My, Were you getting laid? Yes. And Whoa. You, you know who else was? Do you know who else was? Uh, I, my, I was literally the other three people who worked in that position were mentally retarded, and I'm not even joking. That was my job. That was my job. They were, and I'm sorry if that's an offensive term. They had they had disabilities, so that was my that was my uh, job, it's right? A David Sedaris story. That was my job. Yeah, and I I lived with a, I lived with a, a a rave DJ and one other person, and uh, and I would go and drink coffee and have conversations, and and it, and it worked out that way. So it's like if the model that you if you think. That, that the way you're going to get love in the universe is through some fucking social – getting to some social strata, then you have become poisoned by the cultural conditioning that the people selling fucking cars want you to believe. Of course, and most people are. It's very effective, and most women are, and those are the people you have to appeal to. I, what I'm, I'm advocating compassion for our brothers and sisters. That, that's what I'm trying to say here, that – I don't – I mean I, I don't uh, agree with trickery at all. You, you, know, you know me well enough to know that. But um, I do understand that there are – a lot of the anger that these guys feel toward women is born of extreme sexual frustration in their teenage years when they couldn't get laid to save their lives, right. literally. Yeah. And that's a form of torture, and they're blaming women for that. And that's the misogyny. That's the the serial killers. That's the pickup right. artists. That's all these guys, right? And I feel for them because it is an intense form of suffering. They're blaming the wrong people. The, the women aren't responsible for that. The society is responsible. A society that tells women and girls that if you fuck a guy you're only friends with, you're a slut. And, you know, word's going to get around and your life's going to be ruined. And it should be because you're a piece of shit. That society is stopping those guys from getting laid, right? I So I advocate promiscuity to try to, like, solve the problem for everybody. Responsible promiscuity, right. ethical promiscuity. Right. 
Um, but I don't want to dismiss and just say those guys are fucking assholes because they're resorting to tricks to try to get what they feel they need. Because the fact is they live in a society where most women are contaminated with that same bullshit. Right. And so they're trying to appeal to that. So they, you know, wear a fake Rolex to try to look rich because they know that some women will respond to that. Well, I mean, and the, yeah, right. And, you know, that's the other very sad thing about that shit is that it's like, great. Well, you're fish. Look what you're fucking fishing for. 